Well, howdy, everybody. Welcome back to another round of War Robots with Stu Pandas. <laughs> oh, what an idiot. Why do you guys come and watch me? Anyway, so today uh, we're going to be taking a look at some rhinos. Uh, I've, I've already recorded a couple videos. I've got some decent footage. Maybe we'll do like a mashup. I don't know. I guess we'll see what we end up doing. Uh, this will probably be my last recording for the night. I might have time for another one, though. I guess we'll see. Anyway, so for the rhino, so we had... A lot of I've had a lot of people recently asking me about the Rhino, how to run it, and stuff like that. I'm not going to pretend to be like a master of the Rhino, but I can give you guys um, some pretty good tips. I'm just trying to see who's uh, who's back there. That's one thing you can do is you can look backwards while moving forward <laughs> with the Rhino. Can't do that with anyone else, can you? Looks like that guy's looking at me. Oh, it looks like he's following me over here too. That team of losers guy. Let's see if we can, uh, oh crap, they're shooting at me too. This, see, this is a bad call. This is what you don't want to do over, I, I just said this to somebody. So anyway, so names of people, um, I, I looked at them real quick right before I started recording. Um, but we've got like Kevin, uh, Muhammad, and I think, uh, I think Ryan, I think you had some questions about like good setups for it. I think you were the one that we talked about, um, oh crap. <laughs> he got me through the wall because of splash damage. I really wish they would rework the way the splash damage weapons work so they can't shoot through barriers. I just, I don't know. Like, I, I know they kind of need it a little bit so that they can shoot through like physical shields, but like, I don't know. I, I really think they do need to rework those. I don't know if it's possible though without building the game on a new engine. So anyway, um, but yeah, so y'all and, and a lot of other people have been asking about, you know, different setups to run on it and everything and, and um, yeah, Ryan, I think I told you that you don't want to, like, overextend yourself in it. Like, that's exactly what I did with that guy. I should have corner peeked and saw if those guys were even looking at me. Like, that was a bad call. I just got stuck talking to you guys about stuff. I should have corner peeked, and then I, I wouldn't have had to have wasted the bot. Um, I could have done something else or waited for them to react to somebody else before, you know, catching them off guard, that kind of thing. So... Anyway, uh, we've got another Rhino in though, so I've got a Death Button one and a Plasma one because I know a few other people, and I, I couldn't I couldn't get all the names in my head before starting, but a few other people asked me to run uh, specifically a Plasma Rhino and a Death Button Rhino. Um, one one person asked for a Hailfire Rhino. I think it was some name that I couldn't like remember because it, it was like it was like your stand like a typical like username with like numbers and letters and stuff like that. I think it started with a D, but anyway. Um, so, yeah, so, so as far as the Rhino goes, like, th those are my, those are my preferred setups on it anyway, are, are running the, the plasma or the death button configuration. I don't like, I, I prefer the Griffin for my Punishers because you can really move in real fast if you need to, or you can back off if you need to, and the Punishers work either way. Like, you can use it as a mid-range setup from further away, or, um, a really potent uh, close range setup from up close, so it just depends. So let's move in here and take this beacon. Holy Ancelot. So we've got two Ancelots here, and I think I passed one of my teammates just behind me that's also running a, a Lance or an Ancelot. I can't I can't recall which. <laughs> totally protected um, from this carnage by these guys' shields, though, so that was fun. Well, there's no way they're taking this beat. Yep, here he is, right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I can't move. <laughs> they're so fat. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I prefer the Griffin for, for Punishers. Like, uh, I've, I've had a lot of people ask me if I can run them on a Rhino, and I just don't think it's as effective. Let's see if we can grab this beacon before getting taken out. Um, just so we can keep these guys honest. We'll keep them distracted. My, those Ancelots have that beacon over there, so I'll, uh, I'll burn through this bot for the team's sake. I'll do it. The sacrifice play. And, uh, and then, yeah, so I, someone at, oh crap, I forgot to look at the name, but someone asked me about the dock. And so right now I've got the dock in with uh, with Punishers and Tyrons. They asked me what my favorite setup is uh, for the dock, and this is actually um, this is probably my top favorite setup. I, I like it with four Orkins, but I also don't like wasting four Orkins on just one robot. <laughs> I, like, I like spreading out the love a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is my preferred setup, and I prefer running the Punishers on um, on the first set of of weapon uh, hard points. And let me tell you why. So. And we've talked about this before with the dock as well, um, but I know a lot of people are, are newer and stuff. Channel's been growing like crazy. Thank you guys so much for the amazing support. But yeah, so I, I prefer them on this because when you're moving in, 
when you first spawn into your bot, generally it's nice to have the extra range then. You know, when you're further away, you don't have to switch. It's not like the cooldown's that long anyway. But um, so I prefer them for that reason. And because of the bullet spread of these guys, the closer they are together, the other the other hard points it sets the Punishers like really far apart. So like right here with the Tehrans. See how far apart that is? So when you have the Punishers there, it's just like having them on the outside of like a Griffin. The bullet spread, like it doesn't focus like in the middle very much. Like when with the bullet spread on these, like the um, to the left and the right of the, you know, the firing cone of both of these, the bullet spread ends up, you know, hanging out in the middle of that firing cone a lot more between the two of them. So, man, I'm getting wrecked over here. But hey, we were able to help grab this beacon. So th that's why I prefer it. It's it's kind of like, and I, I've heard Adrian talk about this before. Oh crap, I'm dead. <laughs> Had a meal. But yeah, I've heard Adrian talk about it before. Like with the Patton, like it's it's really effective running like all Punishers or all Molots on it because um, because the weapon hard points are so close together. Like that bullet spread, like you're actually you're doing like a little bit more damage, like percentage wise, because the firing cones are all overlapping much more in the middle. Whereas, like, if the weapons are further apart, um, like, you know, like on a Griffin or on, like, a Lancelot or something like that, when they're further apart, those firing cones aren't overlapping on your target very much. So, that might be a little bit confusing, but, you know, let me know if that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, drop a comment, and uh, I'll, I'll try to respond to as many as I can. And I, I am sorry about not being able to respond to as many comments lately. It's been killing me. <laughs> I've still been reading every comment. Well, almost every comment. Um, there's been a few days where I've fallen asleep before <laughs> making it through too many of them or uploading a video. <laughs> I just keep falling asleep in my, the chair that I work in. So, okay, cool. So we've got that. Um, looks like he's moving towards their side beacon instead of over here. So that's good for us. We're getting wrecked though. We need to be careful, um, because <laughs> we've only got this guy, this Galahad and we've got, um, what else do we have left? Do we have a plasma? I think we've got our plasma rhino still. Um, so I guess we can talk about him in a minute. Okay, so he's a plasma dude. That's nice. Um, I think that Leo's still alive over there, though, so we do need to be careful about him. Um, but, yeah, let's see. Let's see what's going on. Oh, crap. Yeah, see, that that's the guy we need to be careful of. He was the guy that initially hit us um, in this a minute ago. He's the one that jumped or that uh, shot me on my way over to this position, and he took away he took away a decent check of my, my health. It was maybe like a fifth, if I remember. But anyway, this is this is a close game. Hopefully, hopefully we can win this. Oh crap, I'm dead. I've only got 22,000 HP Zors left, so <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to. Oh man, I've got 5,000. I lost my Tehran. The Tehran's a saving grace because like every second it does like 10,000 damage. Um, and so like if you can get like 10,000 damage off on a guy, that's great. Just having the Magnums left though, um, like in a second, you're only doing like 5,000 damage. So, um. Would have been nice if it was uh, that, but I think they have that on purpose with the Galahad for balancing. <laughs> Excuse me, I think they have the uh, the Tehran, the medium weapon, pop on, pop pop off first when you're getting uh, when you're getting destroyed. So I think there's still that plasma Griffin over here. We'll hopefully wait and see if we can get somebody to jump. Yeah, there he is right there. So once they jump, like that's what you want to look for. So in your Rhino, like you don't want to overextend yourself, like I was talking about before. So you want to leave yourself out, and you want to make sure you're not separated from your teammates. I just I saw a death button over there, and so I want to get behind cover uh, so that that guy can't get us. But through these gaps, you can fire a little bit. Oh, crap, 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 crap. I was trying to cycle targets to that guy, but <laughs> because of the lag that I'm, that I'm seeing right now, um, because of the lag, it wasn't letting me switch targets. I wonder if we'll be able to take this beacon back real quick. Right now we're losing. We've only got a minute left. Yeah, I just see that guy that just, like, disappeared. Okay, these guys both have, like, no health. So I'll sacrifice some of my health to come in here and just take out both of them. Oh, nice. And, yeah, long-range weapons, super hard to use, close range. So, nice. Got both of those kills, too. All right. So moved in, took those out. So having the speed on the Rhino is really nice. Like, that's one of the perks of it is, is that it has that super fast speed now. Oh, he's out of range. Um... I think our best bet's going to be to come over here and, and help support the team. But yeah, so you have that speed, and so it's really easy for people, especially like in lower levels where everything else is so slow. It's really easy for people to get overextended in their Rhino. And uh, 
end up in a spot in a position that they don't want to be in. They're overextended. They're getting nailed. They can't escape, kind of thing. So <laughs> it's lucky that that guy was focusing that Griffin because we were able to almost take him out. That was super close. If if he didn't turn, I think we would have been able to take him out in like one more second. So, oh, nice. <laughs> so I, I just, I kept putting my shield up so that I could get myself up against the wall as fast as possible in case there's aphids coming or anything like that. But anyway, so we'll talk about the rhino some more. Um, <laughs> seven beacons, holy crap. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about the rhino some more in the future. I'll keep putting it in and stuff like that. But anyway, thanks for coming and checking out the video, guys. And I hope you have an amazing day.